In the Solvay process, ammonia and carbon dioxide gases are dissolved in brine solution to produce a solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. Now the sodium hydrogen carbonate crystallizes from this solution and is decomposed by heating it to produce the product, sodium carbonate. So let's take it nice and slow. First, we get the brine, that super saturated sodium chloride solution. One way is to just dissolve the stuff in water, or if you can get it naturally, locate some rock salt, blast pressurized hot water in these boreholes, which dissolves the stuff and rises to the surface. Either way, it needs to be treated for impurities such as calcium sulfate, as these can have undesirable effects on the end product. For example, calcium ions can be removed using ionic precipitation using sodium carbonate. Magnesium ions can be removed using sodium hydroxide. After all this, just flocculate these bad boys out of there. So this is the main part, in which ammonia and carbon dioxide are dissolved in the brine solution to produce the sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is then crystallized out of the solution. So carbon dioxide comes from the thermal decomp of limestone, which is carried out in a furnace. Some carbon dioxide is generated in a later stage and is recycled, but whatever. Ammonia is also dissolved into the brine in an ammonia absorber. Real creative. This ammoniated brine solution passes down through a series of baffles in a tall Solvay tower. Carbon dioxide gas is bubbled up through the solution where it dissolves and reacts to form a solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. The sodium ions and the chloride ions are spectator ions in this process. This is because when the carbon dioxide is bubbled through the ammoniated brine solution in the Solvay tower, the carbon dioxide dissolves to form a weak acid. The ammonia in the brine reacts with the hydrogen ions to form ammonium ions. Then, the hydrogen carbonate ions then react with the sodium ions to form a suspension of sodium hydrogen carbonate. As this process is carried out at 0 degrees Celsius, sodium hydrogen carbonate is much less soluble in water than ammonium chloride. Therefore, much of the sodium hydrogen carbonate crystallizes as a solid, leaving all the ammonium chloride in solution. This solid sodium hydrogen carbonate is then separated using fractional crystallization. However, we still need to get back the ammonia. Anyways, the sodium hydrogen carbonate is converted to sodium carbonate by heating it at 300 degrees Celsius. It's then washed and dried and ready to be stored or transported. The carbon dioxide is reused in the formation of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Let's add that link. Now because ammonia is such an expensive raw material, the ammonium chloride solution is heated with calcium hydroxide to recover the ammonia. Now the saturated calcium hydroxide itself is produced by reacting calcium oxide formed in the earlier decomp of limestone to produce CO2 in water. Then we take the calcium hydroxide and react it with the ammonium chloride to recover the ammonia. This is then returned to the ammonia absorber.